Hello everybody. Thanks for uh, stopping by the channel for another Screwy Tuesday. It's going to be a real short one. It's just going to be on a couple of uh, 3D print items. And uh, one of them is uh, right here behind me. Oh, Howie just turned the lights on as he came into the shop. And playing with my new camera there. Why, why Howie's bugging me. But uh, I 3D printed a ring light for uh, my mill and uh, been pretty happy with it. I haven't done a lot of work on the mill with it, but uh, it seems to uh, to work really well. And uh, let me uh, let me grab a, a uh, item right here. There it is right behind me. So here's a 3D ring that I did print and the I had to mill it when I was done. So the first time I printed it, I printed it in 20% uh, infill. And so you can see what happens. But once I bored that to fit my mill, it worked fine. And so then I ended up reprinting it again, the red version you see behind me, at 100% fill. And then I also had to modify the inside to fit the ring light. But uh, been real happy with it so far. And... Uh, We'll uh, keep you posted on how it uh, how it tends to work. So uh, we'll switch here and we'll go over to uh, look at the item I did on my belt grinder. So uh, here's the unit with no lights on in the shop. And we'll see if my lights will click on in my shop. So that's my uh, main shop lights. And then I have some LED lights. They come on here also and then I have another light up here that uh, that I turn on and then there's also one more light <laughs> so it, it works real well and the uh, ring light does give you uh, some lighting on the back side the uh, units that I have up here um, tend to only shine very much on the front, but they do work. Uh, they do work relatively well. Um, thinking of 3D prints, um, I did. Uh, I did some little prints up here. Get the light out of the way. So I had a place to hang my steering wheel when I took it off my mill. I had a place to hang my uh, my three uh, three spoke and uh, the standard uh, standard handle also. So, uh, all right, now we'll go over to the grinder. Mounting the uh, unit on the uh, mill, I just used uh, hot glue. I was thinking about screwing it and, and uh, hot glue seemed to work real good. I can pop it off if I need to and always uh, hot glue it back on and I also had to make a uh, little notch so that I could still use the mounting bracket here on the side of the mill. Okay now we'll go over and look at the grinder. So if you recall in my past video, one of my past videos, I made the chamfering jig um, or, or block that Tom Lipton had designed and I made it for my surface grinder and that uh, worked out well and Harold uh, amateur redneck workshop had ended up making one for his belt grinder so here's the one for my belt grinder copying what kind of what Harold did and you can see the notch in the wood there so I just mounted it real quick on a piece of wood and tried it and uh, it was uh, it was successful, so I moved to uh, step B. Well, here's how I decided to do this uh, setup. I thought about I could put it, do it in the mill, and I'd have to pull the vise possibly, or not pull the vise, rotate the ram, extend the ram. And I thought about it, I said, wait a minute, my welding table's drilled and tapped, so I can just set it up right here. And my mag drill is right down there, and I'll just use my mag drill. So I've got the uh, clamp holding it there. 
and everything's nice and square. You can see the edge. Edge right there is nice and square. And this is coming off the table nice and square. So uh, just set up the mag drill and we'll give it a drill. Well, first is the clearance hole. And I made one with a out of aluminum. And uh, I'll put this camera on a tripod and we can uh, see how it works. But you can see here I put a uh, a stop on it so that when uh, when you uh, pull the bracket out it'll always return back to the same spot and it's adjustable so you can move it in or out whatever it needs to. There's another 3D printed knob. I'm having a lot of fun with this 3D printing as you can tell. So uh, let me get this on a uh, tripod and uh, we'll show you uh, some examples. Um, well, here's, of course, I've been playing and uh, I've been real happy with um, how it's uh, how it's been performing so far. But uh, let me throw it on a tripod and I'll show you in action. Uh, thought I'd add this. Uh, the aluminum at this size does not have a square corner. So I had to put it in the mill and, and get a, basically a square corner in there. You can get aluminum angle with a 90 degree corner, but not at this type of size. Let's see, before I do that, I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, but the you might be able to uh, see that the edge of the belt is frayed there. And uh, that happened as uh, part of a learning experience using this. Um, my good friend uh, Flea Market Dave was over and uh, he went to uh, try it. And the piece, the piece had a burr on the end. And of course the burr caught the edge of the belt and uh, took off a little strip there. Not a problem. So it's uh, part of a learning curve on using it. But I, I figured that was uh, somewhat noticeable, so I thought I'd uh, mention it. Got a little nick there, something got caught. That's uh, the one thing I learned. You can't shove it in hard. You just got to let it ride nice and easy against the uh, guide. But it uh, does a nice job. There you see the couple of nicks that were in the steel. Doing an end there, see how that works. Straight that time. Still go straight. There it is. Clean it up. So all in all, real happy with it. It's a quick way to use it here on the grinder. It's a, a quick tool to here to use on the grinder, and. Uh, I got another uh, 3D print to show you, so we'll go look at one more thing. So here's a, another 3D print that I was doing. And this was my starting print, and this was my uh, proof of concept. And uh, I printed it in 20% uh, fill, but it was just uh, something I drew up in Fusion and wanted to make sure that uh, it worked. And then I printed it again, and you can see the 
the problem I had here. This, uh, this slot was supposed to remain parallel. Printed it twice, actually. And uh, thank you to friends out there that taught me about bridging. You can actually print it where this piece has a sacrificial member in there, so there's bridging. Otherwise, it's trying to print uh, cantilevered, and of course you end up with a joint that's no good. So you go, hey, what's all this for? Well, let me, uh, let me grab it. Well, this is what I printed it for, those prints. I bought this heat gun at the flea market, and it didn't have the support so that you could actually set it down and have it point up in the air. Well, it was a fun fun uh, print. I printed it thicker here, hopefully to give it more strength. And um, the groove came out nice. I didn't have any problem with that. You can see it's pushed apart here because of the weight of the unit. So it's actually, when I first printed it, it was sitting up pretty much straight and the weight of the unit, it's been sitting there like that, so it's actually gone over onto its side, but it's still a functional tool the way it is. And that was the biggest problem, is whenever I was doing heat shrink tubing, I didn't have the ability just to hold it over the uh, unit itself. So I was really glad that uh, I got this printed and uh, it was a fun exercise, still trying to learn fusion. And it made my tool a little, a little more useful. And I got one more, one more item to show you. The last is uh, I printed a tray. You're going, okay. And uh, <laughs> the uh, the tray. Um, I found a guy that had uh, shown a lot of trays uh, online and uh, I picked them up and you can modify them. I put cork on the back, but this tray is a special, uh, special, special unit. Um, Steve Lang, Shark River Machine, was kind enough to send me a couple of his precision stones. And uh, if you guys don't have these guys, I mean they are... They are just a godsend to the shop. Um, I'll put a link to Steve's channel in the description. Um, you can contact Steve about purchasing these units. But uh, these are nice size. They're not, I have a bigger set that I got. It was a gift from uh, Lance Balzi, which I'm very grateful for. And I use those in the shop all the time. And these little guys are handy also. So I thought I'd share that with you. And again, just showing you another thing that you can do with uh, 3D printing. All right, well, I really appreciate you stopping by for a Screwy Tuesday. Um, oh, let's see. I guess I got one more to show you. Hang on. I don't know if I've ever shown this. Already. So there's a set of uh, vice jaws that I printed. Now, these were a copy of My Mechanics. He had shown the um, sketch, which gave the dimensions. And uh, I made them for all three of my vices. And you can see this guy's already been, uh, it's already been hit which uh, 
it's okay. Just print another one. You can see I printed this one in 20% uh, fill and uh, they work fine. Put one magnet in it and uh, they grip well. They don't, uh, I've tried, you know, crushing them. They work re really good. So just another uh, little item of uh, 3D printing that uh, has been very, uh, very handy in the shop. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it, as I said. Um, this was another another print to uh, hold a, uh, where's that? Uh, there's another print to uh, hold a, uh, a foot, hold, uh, foot pedal that I was going to mount on my welding table just for parking it. And I still have to uh, do that. Still have to mount it. All right. So that's it for this uh, Screwy Tuesday. I hope you guys enjoyed um, the uh, enhancements that I've been doing in my shop with uh, the 3D printer. Hope to see you soon. Hope to see you soon again. Take care.